what's going on happy thursday everyone i hope everyone has had a lovely week so far as you know thursday means thursday night live with myself nancy baker this week we are joined by jenna clark jenna is currently at glasgow city and she also plays for the scotland national team we're just gonna wait for jenna to come in hopefully as always it doesn't take too long Let's see if we can find her. I hope everyone has had a great week so far. Weekend. Uh, she's she's requested to come in. That's what we like. So hopefully she gets in. Yes, what's going on? Hi, I'm good, thanks. How are you? Yeah, I'm not too bad. How's your day been? Yeah, it's been good. Just had, uh, just had training earlier, so not all home. Was it a morning session or an afternoon session or like a whole whole day? Just kind of like whole day, like we were on the pitch, there for about half nine on the pitch, about 11, and then went away by like three-ish maybe. Oh, so it's a f full day of football? Yeah, um, like just this year we've kind of went more full-time in terms of like basically just training throughout the day. What's that transition been like for you going from part-time to full-time? It's been good, like obviously that's what you want to do at the end of the day, yeah. is just play football as, as much and as often as you can. So to get that opportunity, like still being in Glasgow has is, is been good. Definitely. And is training far from, you, far from you? Does it take you a while to get there or is it all quite local? Nah, it's, it's quite local. So um, we've kind of changed venue to our, where we play our home games. Um, it's now where we train, so it's only like 20 minutes max. Oh, nice. Do you prefer having everything in one in one space? Does it feel more like more like home? Yeah, um, just like the gym and being able to use the facilities there as well as training and playing our matches there is is also a lot better. Um, as as you said, it just feels more like a home. Yeah, what's the gym like? It's good. It's um, just got like everything you need for like a footballers program basically. So it's quite good. We go in in, in like two separate groups, so it's not too too crowded and stuff um but yeah it's good how when you're when you're in the gym who's the who's the person that can like squat the most on their back who's like the whammiest of them all on the team it's got to be megan foley yeah without she, a shadow of a doubt straight up oh, you said that yeah. so quick as well i think everyone on the team the team would say megan as well i think yeah she's just a bit like fitness mad um she does a lot of like crossfit and stuff she put yeah. into that so yeah, Would you say she's thing. the fittest as well in terms of running? So, like, she can run for days or does someone else give her a run for her money with that? Uh, she's definitely up there. She is definitely up there. Um, there's a couple others, but I think I'll stick with Megan on that one, yeah. Who's the player on your team when you go up, up against in training? You're like, like obviously, you're, you're a centre-back. Who's one player that you come up against and you just think, not her again? <laughs> I think, well, pace-wise... Yeah. Pace wise, like there's a there's a couple of quick ones. Um like all day she's so much power in her, like when she's running, she's just she's pretty quick off the mark. Um but nah, I'd like to think that I can give them a lot of them a good a good run for the money, but yeah, there's a couple of quick ones in there. How would you describe yourself as a player if you had to use three words? Oh, um <laughs> three words. <sighs> God, I'm lost for words now. Um, <laughs> three words. I don't know. I'm quite like calm, probably. Yeah. I'd calm say. and composed. I like that. Yeah, well, that's two. That's two. No, uh, you can't use composed. <laughs> that's my word. Right, right. <laughs> um, quite calm. I quite like the big. I quite like a long ball. Just a yeah. long pass. Yeah. Um, like switch a play. Uh. And, yeah, I don't know, another one. I'm not very good at talking back about myself, but, uh, do you want? Yeah. Do you want to borrow the word composed? I'll I let think, you have I it. I think I'll need to take composed, yeah. Calm and composed. As a centre-back, though, and the position that you play, it is super important to be to be calm on the ball, isn't it? Like, you, you can't panic when you've got that ball at your feet, especially if you're doing something like playing out from the back. Yeah, definitely. Um, there's obviously going to be situations where you're, a bit less composed and under more pressure but I think 
yeah, it is really important. I think if you can kind of set that tone for like, the team, then it makes a big impact. Yeah, definitely. So let's take it. Let's take it back to to when when you were younger. Was football always a dream for you? Was there other sports that you played? Where did you want to be something else, or was it football as a passion? How did you get started with it? I think just kind of always football's been like I played a lot of sports when I was younger, but football yeah. was always like the main the main one and the one I enjoyed the most. Um, and like obviously I've got I've got an older brother and he used to kick a ball about, so I think I just joined in with him and then. Yeah, just tried a few sports, but again, football was the one I loved the most, so I just stuck with that one. And how did it come about that you were a cent? Well, you were going to be a centre back. Was it when you were growing up? You just sort of stayed at the back. Did you play a bit of everywhere? Was it until not until you got a bit older and you had more coach coach exposure and they sort of guided you to to hold that position? How how did that work out? I think. I was kind of always like a centre mid, but like a like a like a six, like holding mid. Yeah. Um, and then I moved. I was kind of playing with like the boys' team still then, and then when I moved into like the women's the women's side, I think my um, like my my stance, like my physicality, like I stand quite tall, I'm like six one. So I was gonna say it, you're quite tall. <laughs> yeah. So I think that just kind of like helped, and then I just kind of naturally found my way my way to centre back and. I think it's worked out for the best. You said you grew up playing with the boys. I think for a lot of young females, that's that's the case. I know personally that like, I grew up with playing with with boys as well, and I absolutely loved it. What do you think at a young age playing with boys did for you, not only physically but but mentally, like playing the sport? Yeah, I think um, as you said, like physically, it's obviously like more demanding being like the only girl on a boy's side yeah um but mentally I think it was it was quite good it made you a bit more resilient um and I was lucky enough I was really close with my boys team yeah and um, like we all same school like just all hung about with each other so it was quite good but I think mentally yeah it just helps you grow as like a person and as a young girl as well definitely did you ever experience you just said that you were quite close with the boys and like you went to school school with them which is really nice to hear did you ever experience any negativity of you playing with the boys or were you let's say lucky enough not to experience it because some people do and some people don't yeah I think from my own teammates I never never yeah. ever did um but yeah certainly from opposition there's definitely a few points here and there about you know, being a girl and playing, playing with the boys. But um, again, lucky enough, I had I had my teammates to back me up, and and they did. But yeah, unfortunately, it it just happened. Um, you know, well, I'm not always gonna get it, but being the only girl and sometimes being better than the boys you're playing against to get, don't know, affects their ego. I think so. They will always have something to say. I was definitely gonna say that. I think when you're when you're playing as a female and you're going up against boys and there's comments here and there and then when they actually see you play and you outdo them and you outplay them, it's just like, it's even a bit more of a, of like a, a, a punch in the gut as to say, because they've given, they've given them comments, they've thrown it out and then they've come up against you and they've come up unstuck. Yeah, exactly. I think, you know, there's no point saying anything back, just literally play the game and, and that will, I'm sure, shut them up. Yeah. Definitely one of those, like, let your feet do the talking. Yeah, exactly. When you played at school, at school, were you able to play with the boys? Was it like, I don't know, let's say lunchtime, for example, would you always have a kickabout with the boys? When Did you have a girls' team at school or could you play with the boys there? It's it's different in every school, I suppose. Yeah, so when I when I first got into high school, there had been like no girls on any of like the boys' teams. It was, yeah. I'd say, like, boys' football. And... Um, I think because I played with them like the same group of boys basically on a Saturday and, and trained with them every week. Um, I, I asked the question and I managed to then play with the boys in the school team and again I was I was literally the only girl but yeah I think it was for until third year I think they allowed me to like that was that was the rules at the time. Yeah. Um, so lucky enough I was able to play with them and then eventually like we got a girls team together which was quite good. So I did a bit of both. Were you quite in, instrumental in getting a women, well, a girls team at the time together, being 
probably one of the first and playing with the boys so you're sort of at the forefront so did you have much of an impact at, at your school doing that yeah so um I think I just got like as many girls as I could that have that are like in my year that have probably never kicked a ball in their life yeah. um I was like we just need I think it was sevens at the time yeah like we just need six more players like can you just do it and then I think they eventually kind of started liking it um and then they I think they still now have girls teams Oh, nice. What was your yeah. um, what were your teachers like? Were they supportive? Did you have both male and female PE teachers? Did the like the female teachers get behind it? Did they follow football or? Yeah, um, both like male and female. Um, I think the whole PE department, as long as you're doing well, like they'll they'll follow you. Um, but yeah, the PE teachers are really good. I've, I'm still in contact with a few of them. They've just like, obviously, with everything that's happened. Last year, they've messaged me here and there. Um, so it's been nice. But yeah, I think all the teachers were, were pretty supportive in like anything you do. Do you ever get the opportunity to go back to your old school? I'm sure they'd absolutely love to, ha to have you have you in there, if yeah. you've not done it already. Um, well, just because of COVID, I haven't yeah. been able to. Um, like I did a, like an online thing for them, yeah. uh, just due to the circumstances. But yeah, I, I definitely go go back it'd be quite nice I think I gave them I gave them one of my Scotland talks um when I left so maybe I'll need to go back did you sign it for them and they've got, have they got it like in yeah, a frame so in that? it was um it was actually one from under 19s okay. so I was still in I think I was just finishing sixth year and we had the the Euro finals like Scotland yeah. we were hosting them so I gave them I got the whole team to sign the shirt and gave them that but maybe I'll need to go back with with one from like more recent what was it like going from the younger age group into the senior age group for, for Scotland? How Obviously, representing your country at any level is incredible, but yeah. I would like to imagine that when you do it at the senior level, which is the highest level it can be, it's just maybe that little bit more special. Yeah, it definitely is. As you say, it's it's always like an honour and you get such a buzz, like such a good feeling, like pulling on the top. But I think, yeah, the A squad is just just something else like you walk in and you're back to being like the young, you're the youngest there and like yeah. you're a bit shy and you've got all these players that you've looked up to for so long and um, so it's definitely it's a bit surreal but it's just amazing can you um talk us through your your debut a little bit yeah um <laughs> yeah that was a good day um why was it a good day just getting on and yeah, <laughs> oh yeah it was all right um just all right seven yeah. out of ten just above average nah 10 out of 10 it was definitely <laughs> it was just yeah I'm still a bit lost for words to be honest but yeah it was just like so good to first of all get the opportunity to be to be on the pitch and then to top it off with a goal was yeah just literally things you dream about and then probably don't expect to ever happen on your debut but yeah I was delighted it's I'd say it's like a dream debut isn't it you probably couldn't ask for much more I bet as well like everyone within your family and the team must have been so proud of you like your coaches what what was that like what was your how was your phone when you got off the pitch yeah well I actually I don't have um I don't have any notifications on for like anything so <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I went on everything though there was um it was busy yeah um but it was good to just like I had like my whole family there um so it was good to see them after the game and then on the way to the game, we were having like there was a bit of like a joke going about about like scoring in your debut and stuff. Um, so for that to actually happen was a bit, yeah, a bit mental. But um, yeah, nonetheless, it was just it was amazing that all round. Can you describe the feeling of the ball hitting the back of the net? Like, is there any words for it? Probably not. I think <laughs> like if anyone's that's seen it, will know that I had like no one around me. Yeah. Like when I saw the ball like drop down, I was like, <laughs> "Is it really happening?" But um, yeah, for it to hit the back of the net and just turn around and you've got all the girls like, running at you, it's uh, yeah, it's such a good feeling. One that yeah, I'll never forget. And you spoke about obviously when you stepped up to the senior team, playing alongside some of the the players that you looked up to or that you've aspired to be like. Who were the sort of players? Obviously, I'd imagine most of the girls you were absolutely delighted to play with and train with but 
who sort of stands out to think, oh my God, like I've played with her, I've trained with her? I think for me, like being a centre back, you're obviously looking up to like Rachel Carson yeah. and Jen Beatty. Um, but then you've also got so many other like good players, like Carolyn Weir, Aaron Cuthbert. I mean, I could literally name the whole team. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think definitely Jen and, and Carson was just amazing because they're both two players that I've, I've looked up to. Um, and yeah, definitely want to play alongside them. So yeah, definitely those two. Where were you when you got your, your call up when you found out like you were going on the camp? Do you remember? Yeah, I was just driving. Um well I wasn't driving, I was in the passenger seat. Yeah. Yeah, I was with my girlfriend and I just got this phone call and I was obviously I didn't have the number on my phone um, yeah. of Pedro. And I just answered it and I was like confused who it was at first. Um so yeah, that was again just another moment where I was like stop the car <laughs> <laughs> pull over. Um, but yeah, that was and then I was straight on the phone to my to my mom and dad. When you saw the phone call, obviously, as you said, you didn't have the number saved. Was there one of those moments where you're like, "Do I pick this up or not?" Yeah, so like normally I wouldn't. Um, and then you pick up, and if you don't recognise the voice, you're quick to hang up. So yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I'm just I'm happy I picked up this time. Yeah, it would have would have been them ones when if you didn't pick up you just keep bellying your phone and you'd be like who is this person ringing me <laughs> must know them <laughs> better pick up yeah definitely so playing playing with the with the under 19s what sort of atmosphere was it like going from that to the seniors how how was it different for you how was it a step up or was it more so quite a natural a natural stepping stone for you or was you still like a bit like oh I'm here like this is this is am I meant to be here do you know what I mean yeah um I think like under 19 you're still you are still very young yeah um so coming out of that there's not like an expectation to be straight in the A squad yeah so like the jump is is quite big um but yeah as I think once I was in there a couple of days it was okay but certainly like, getting there I was just like absolutely buzzing like seeing the, seeing the team was still a bit like surreal like seeing them there but um yeah they're they're all like lovely as you can imagine so they um made sure felt welcome and but yeah it was just it is a big step but once you're in it it's just you just love it it must be such a a great space to just go in and and I'd imagine you were like a sponge. You just absorbed everything from everyone, just taking it all in. Yeah, definitely. Um, so much to learn. Like the experience that some of the players have. Um, all you can do is just be like an, a sponge, as you say, and just take in literally everything you can get. Um, so yeah, I think that's what you need to do. Just like going into it is be open minded and take everything in. So I think I've already learned so much from the camps I've been involved in yeah uh, so yeah hopefully learn learn a lot more and obviously you're at Glasgow City I noticed you wear the number 12 yeah yeah uh personally I feel like the best players wear 12 so <laughs> well done for making making that that select group of uh players who wear the best number is there a reason why you wear the number 12 or was it just it was just it was just given to me so okay <laughs> Um, there was no choice in it. Um, yeah, it was just given to me, and quite like it now. So maybe I'll maybe I'll try and keep it for the rest of my my career. I personally think it's a great number. So shout out to you on that one. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we've also got a few questions that have been sent sent in. So I'm gonna reel some of those off. And naturally, people always want to know. Uh, this can be both for both teams. So. Who is the prankster for for the Scottish team, and who's the prankster at Glasgow? Prankster. Well, the Scottish national team, obviously. Yeah, um, and the Scottish national team. I don't really know. Uh, Sam Kerr is always up to something. Yeah, I think. Yeah, she's always doing something. Um, at City, I don't know if anyone really stands out as <laughs> as a prankster. To be fair, maybe we'll need to. Someone needs to take that up. Someone needs to take the crown. Yeah. So someone's also asked, at what age did you make your Glasgow City debut for the first team? Uh, I joined them when I was 
16, I think. So, I think 16, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's 16. They're such a renowned team. I think they're the biggest, if not one of the biggest, the biggest teams, right? Like, you you know who they are when you talk about, especially when you talk about women's football in Scotland. So yeah. how how does it feel to play for such a renowned team that that people are very aware of? Yeah, I think um, like Glasgow City, as you say, they've they're a women's team and and they've grown massively since since they started up. And I think it's important to kind of understand where the club came from and yeah. we're a very close knit group. So I think just to know and understand like where you, where it's come from and who you're playing for is yeah it's a good feeling definitely. And leading into that, you said how your team's such a close knit and it's got a lot of history. What what does football mean to you, and what do you like most about being within the sport and being at Glasgow City? I think I like the fact that it is close knit and it is like a second family. You see them probably more than your own at times. So I think to go in and just know that they've always got your back and they're always they're always wanting the best out of you is quite a nice feeling. Yeah, it's it's a special I think the women's game is such a special game. And it as you said, like having having a team that also feels like family, it must make playing a million times easier, especially when you you may not get to see your family or spend as much time with them and make a lot of sacrifices which which a lot of people probably don't see or or don't understand how much sacrifice you make yeah um i think like when you are that close and when you want the best for each other it means the winning is just so much better yeah. and and the losses you know you can come together as a group but i mean hopefully it's more of the wins yeah. and you get to celebrate it with like people that have been through it with you so yeah it's definitely good what has been your proudest moment in football definitely scotland um i think just getting the call up in general yeah was like a proud moment um but then yeah again to to get on the pitch um was pretty special as well and it ended even better so yeah i think that's definitely up there and it was a big win as well wasn't it which i bet topped it off so obviously coming on getting that playing time getting that goal and getting the win as a team it, it wasn't it wasn't just an individual win it it turned into a team win as well which I can only imagine makes it mean even more to you yeah definitely and I think for even for other individual players that day was quite special yeah. um, some of the goals that were scored and I think as you say like the overall team performance and the big win it was it was pretty special for everyone, yeah. And to have your family there as well. Yeah, that was uh, made the moment even better, for sure. At what stage did you, in your life, did you realise that being a professional footballer could actually come true and it, it was happening? Yeah, so I think, like, when you're growing up, you kind of always... Well, when I was growing up, I didn't really, like, know it was a, could be a career. Yeah. Um, but I think definitely in the past past few years, um, definitely there's been more like on the media, like social media about yeah. it all, and there's been more exposure for it. So I think past few years it's definitely been more of a like I could I could really make it. And um, what do you think you'd be doing? Well, not what do you think you'd be doing. So. When you were growing up, obviously, you said you weren't 100% sure if you were going to be able to make it, if it was something that was achievable, not in terms of your playing ability, in terms of just the, the space itself. Yeah. What what job were you, like, looking to go into if, if you weren't going to be a footballer? Did you did you have to think about that? I'd imagine that you did. Yeah, so I don't think I'd, I'd really made up my mind, to be honest. Yeah. Um, there wasn't really one specific area that I wanted to go down. Uh, so if it wasn't for football, I'd, I don't know what I'd be doing. I'd definitely be doing something related to the sport or a sport. Um, yeah. yeah, definitely. Just sport in general interests me, but I'm glad, glad I found the route I did. What did you study in 
is it it is sixth form in in scotland right i know different places have different names so i don't want to say the wrong name and then and you'd be like no that's not what it's called yeah yeah like just <laughs> just like sex yeah yeah, yeah. Sixth form, same same thing yeah what did you study like what were your options that you picked so like the subject yeah uh, so I just done like a wide variety. So like our our fifth year is like more important than our sixth year. Oh, okay. But you can get into uni in your fifth year basically. And then really? You, yeah. Oh. So like What and just skip the sixth year and go straight to uni? Yeah, you can. Or like you can get like your conditional based off your fifth year results. Oh, I didn't know so that. Like, yeah, so in fifth year I done like maths, English, Spanish, yeah, human biology, and wow, can't remember my fifth one. How did you get on in Spanish? Uh, can you talk Spanish? No, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> uh, um, I was I just gonna ask you to reel something off because I would be very intrigued to hear Spanish mixed with Scottish. I oh. just think it'd be quite entertaining to be completely honest uh, with you. Def I definitely don't remember that much. Like we've got <laughs> um, like Pri in our team, she's from she's from Costa Rica, so obviously yeah. speak Spanish and no, I can't have a conversation with her, it's all in English. <laughs> <laughs> so when when you picture yourself in the in the next five years and where you want to be and your and your aspirations, what sort of sticks out the most for you? What have you what in your head? What was sort of the the vision? I think just with country, like basically keep getting selected. Yeah. Um, and for club, I'm signed with Glasgow City until 2023. So. Um, really happy here and then I think in the future I would like to maybe go down and play in WSL yeah so obviously it's one of the biggest leagues so I think yeah it's definitely what I want to do at some point in the future yeah love that yeah the the WSL is a it's a, it's a decent league and I think with what you said it, it's one of the biggest but all of women's football is growing so so many leagues are really starting to to get themselves out there and be at the forefront which is amazing um one thing i've got to ask you scotland always have some quality kits always like i've even got scotland kits and clearly i'm not scottish <laughs> <laughs> like i own any kit it doesn't really matter to me what's your favorite scotland kit it doesn't have to be one that you've played in i think um the one from the world cup like the pink oh yeah great yeah. shout Pink's my favourite colour, so it's got to be that one, yeah. I've got, you know, I don't know from what year it's in, but you know, like, the bright pink shorts? Yeah, I think so, yeah. I've got them shorts, and they are yeah. legitimately, like, my favourite shorts, because they're just, like, bright pink. I would get them out, but I don't know where they are. They're somewhere in that area, but I love them. And then there's also, do you remember the white kit, and it was white with a bit of pink and then yellow? Yeah, 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 that one, I like that one as well. That one's I've got that shirt as well. And from a pink in it, to be fair, I, I quite like it. Literally. I've yeah. actually got quite a few bits of Scotland kit, randomly. I think I definitely got it because it was pink. I mean, it's not a bad thing to have Scotland kit. No, it's not, no, it's not a bad no, thing okay. at all. I literally <laughs> would, like, walk out the house in the kit, and people would be like, are you Scottish? I'd be like, no, but have you seen the kit? <laughs> nice kit, though. It's so nice. Yeah. Like. Would you wear kit, like, obviously not when you're playing because you've got a team kit, but just out and about, would you wear kit just if you like it? Like, you said pink's your favourite colour, so, like, would you wear, like, a Real Madrid shirt purely because it's pink? To be fair, I don't own, like, that many that many football kits. Like, I probably wouldn't be out in one. But the one kit that I do like is our away kit last season for Glasgow City was pink. Pink and yeah. black. I love that kit. I feel like you can never go wrong with a pink and a black. No, nah, definitely not. Like, I think that's probably my, one of my favourite kits. Like, if I could get away with walking about in it, that would, but <laughs> I don't think I can. Would you, um, so, not would you, so if you could design a kit, would pink and black be your, be your go-to colours for the kit? Yeah, I think so. I do like pink. I think, to be fair, like an all-black kit is quite smart. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I do quite like I do quite like pink. 
I see I agree with this so much like for me I've said this so many times like if a kit has a bit of pink in or a bit of purple or it's like fully purple I'm like yes I like that like Leeds have got a purple kit at the moment so I like it yeah <laughs> like it, it literally changes with the season yeah um no pink's definitely my kit would definitely have to have pink in it yeah rate it definitely rate it who who do you support if you but, do support <laughs> Glasgow City. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you play for the team that you support. I love it. Um, yeah, but uh, families are, are Liverpool supporters as well. So I'm definitely, definitely a Liverpool fan. <laughs> definitely a Liverpool fan. Yeah. Do you have, is that for the men's? Is that for the men's side? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I mean, I thought, and to be fair, um, the women's side, I kind of follow like, quite a few teams. Yeah. Um. Because, I mean, a lot of them play good football. But I think the men's, I've just followed since I was really young. So, they're like they're like my team, yeah. Do you follow, obviously, a few of the girls that are on the Scot Scotland national team, obviously, playing the WSL. Do you do you watch them when you can? Obviously, the WSL is a league that you can follow quite, quite easily now with yeah. the coverage and stuff. So, do you try and watch women's football when you can or...? Like yeah, men's football war. It's uh, it's definitely good to watch, especially when when you know like a lot of the girls. Um, like even the game last night, we had that on on, for yeah. a bit, and then the old firm took over. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we def definitely watch it when we can. I love that. I think it's really nice to hear that other female players watch and support the game because I think sometimes it people don't necessarily make the effort to watch it but potentially could make the effort to watch more men's football I think it's one of the ways to to help to help grow the game yeah uh, I think um like the exposure it's got now it's so like accessible so yeah yeah there's no reason not to watch it when it's there and it's good who, football. who were you back in last night can you say which game for the the women's game the 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 Chelsea uh, United <laughs> I'm I'm neutral on that one I'm neutral. neutral on that one. Yeah. Will you watch? Will you watch the game tonight? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll probably watch it. Are you back in the team on that one? Nah, just I'm. I'm just neutral. To be fair, women's yeah, yeah. I think it's the best way to be. I, as I always say, I, I base uh, who I'm rooting for on the kit. So whoever <laughs> has the best, whoever <laughs> has the <laughs> kit that I like. Yeah. So. Ultimately, if someone wants to put a, kit, a pink kit on, they've got my vote. Not that, not that it makes a difference. Yeah. But so, this is literally nearly the end of the chat. We've spoke for half an hour, and it's absolutely flown by. Yeah. It's been such a, a pleasure to have you on. But where can people find you if they want to follow you? They want to get to know more about you. Where can people find you and? And when you finish doing that, what would be your sign-off advice for anyone looking to to pursue a career in, in the women's game? So just anyone can get me on, on my Instagram on here. Um, and I think my advice would be just whatever you're going for, just do it like with everything you've got because like you just don't know how good it, it can turn out to be. Like obviously, when I was younger and playing, I didn't know what the future would hold and the yeah. women's game it's grown massively so just think how much it can grow in the next 10 to 15 years so uh, yeah just go at it with, with all you've got probably amazing jenna thank you so much for for giving up your time to to chat with us i've honestly enjoyed it very much and i'm glad we both share the love of a pink kit <laughs> yeah, no, thank you very much for having me on no worries enjoy the rest of your evening and hopefully we'll catch up soon thanks you too see, see you later bye Bye.